Glory to God. Here we are, another conference call. I'm Grace, and I welcome you to this conference call, Beloved. Listen, Beloved, I want to talk to you about uh, what the Lord's been teaching me on, what he's been, um, you know, the Lord will teach us humility, and the Lord will teach us, he will teach us uh, total, full uh, um, submission to him, Beloved, and that's, that's something that Jesus had to had to go through, beloved. So it's not just you know everything that the Lord Jesus Christ suffered. Um, we are able to suffer because Jesus Christ suffered it. And so um, one thing that he was he revealed to me today. Oh, I'm gonna have to go into my notes here because there's there's quite a lot here. I'm not going to read it entirely from my notes, but I do have to go into my notes. And now listen, we have all of this called creature comforts, right? We've got, we worry about food, money, drink, clothing, worry about debt, worry about all these things that, um, that uh, you know, plague a human being while he's on earth, um, while she's on earth. And, you know, it's, it's something the Lord says very clearly, and he says this in the, he says this in he says in the Gospels, he says, take no thought, take no, take no thought for what you are going to, for your life, take no thought for what you are going to eat, for what you are going to wear, for what you are going to drink. And of course, I'm paraphrasing our Lord, but um, also in Philippians 4, 6, this is paramount, be anxious for no thing. You know, it's so easy to go, start getting anxious over things, start getting anxious over food, money, um, drink, clothing, what we're going to wear, what we're going to eat, um, how we're going to make the payment, how we're going to make the rent payment, the mortgage payment. And one thing the Lord would say to me is, you have to stop worrying about focusing on how you're going to do it and focus more on God, focus more on the power of God. And so when we go into Matthew 4, we see the temptation of Jesus. We see how for 40 days and 40 nights, the completion, this is completion of full obedience to the Father. So nothing less. 40 days, 40 nights. And this is something that Israel had to do for 40 years. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. And um, so Jesus submitted his entire spirit and his body. And, you know, this, 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 uh, this is a full-blown suffering on the body because if he is not eating and, and he is in the wilderness where there is no food available, it's just stones. And this is why the enemy came to him and, and tempted him with the whole turn these stones into bread, um, the, the little uh, thing that he threw at our Lord. That's the very first thing that he attacks is the body. He attacks the 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 belly. <laughs> he attacks the skin for skin. Uh, remember when he said this to the Lord when he they were talking about Job. He attacks the skin for skin. And so imagine, we, we, have to, we have to imagine this. Jesus is in the wilderness. There are stones all around. There is no food, no bread to go around. And 40, day, 40 days, 40 nights, uh, the tempter comes and he says, he puts He's, he is tempting the power of God in Jesus. Listen, our Lord was filled with the Holy Spirit, and it was the Holy Ghost who led him into the wilderness. And so when the devil comes, when the tempter comes to tempt our Lord, our Lord is filled with the Holy Ghost. And so when the devil throws this, if you are the Son of God, command these stones be turned to bread, he is tempting the power of God within Jesus Christ. And so this applies to, um, to us as well. Because, see, the Lord fulfilled Matthew 4.4. 4, Thou man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so looking at my notes here, our Lord, he fulfilled this commandment. He is quoting Deuteronomy 8.3. He is quoting the law back to the, the enemy, the enemy of the law, the enemy of the Lord. The, the devil is the enemy of the law. This is why he twists and he, he inverts the law because he hates the law. He hates the righteousness of God. And so Jesus is saying, 
here in Matthew 4, 4, this is the law. Essentially, he's quoting the statutes, the precepts. The commandment is that man shall not live by bread alone. Uh, let's break this down. So man shall not. There, there, there's the commandment right there. Shall not live by bread alone. Bread is in just bread, just the meat, just the food. If you have been living just by food and not by the word of God, the Lord says, you have been getting by. You have been surviving. You haven't been living. And so he says every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, it goes back to Deuteronomy 8.3, which says that the Lord might make thee know that he's speaking to Israel, make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord, doth man live. And so, yes, Jesus was hungry. Of course he was hungry. It was 40 days and 40 nights later. He was, he was beginning, he was to the brink of starvation here. Yet he quotes the law. He fulfills this amazing commandment that says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And so when the enemy comes, he quotes the commandment because Jesus is living. At this point in his life, he is living by when he goes in to, to this 40 day fast now we don't know if he fasted i'm sure he he must have fasted before because to fast for 40 days and 40 nights it is a, it is a feat it is it is trial it is a, it is extremely difficult and you know to go without bread for those 40 days and 40 nights so the lord must have been um must have been trained to fast in this way. You know, I, I love the Lord because that's how he starts you in your fasting journey. He starts you off with the small things that you can handle fasting. And then he puts you through more and more challenges. And glory be to God that he starts us off this way. It doesn't just make us go cold, cold turkey and cut off food entirely 40 days and 40 nights. Our bodies will not survive like that. And don't try it. So, I think the Lord did, he went through seasons of fasting so that he could get to the point of 40 days and 40 nights, no food, just living, living by every word that comes out of the mouth of God for every temptation that the devil, the enemy threw at him. Jesus fought in strength against his belly with the law. Oh, glory be to God. So Mark 1, 12, you know, I, the Lord had me go and, and look at all of these um all, all of the, um, the, the fasting accounts of Jesus Christ in, in, in Matthew and in Mark and Luke. So it says, it was the Spirit. In Mark 1, 12, the Lord just tells me it was the Spirit who led Jesus into the wilderness, right? After his baptism, it was the Spirit who led him to fast for 40 days. Now, Mark doesn't say that Jesus fasted meat. But if you go into the book of Luke, which is, gets more specific, it says that he, did, uh, he ate nothing for 40 days. So he was there in the wilderness, 40 days, tempted of Satan with the wild beasts. How interesting. Then the angels ministered unto him. Ah, oh, praise God. So Luke 4, in Luke 4, it says here that Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. So it was the Spirit who led him into the wilderness. This is after he rises. He, he, he comes out of the water, after his water baptism. Then he's full of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit leads him into the wilderness. And this is like what happened with the prophet Ezekiel when the Spirit led him. Glory be to God. So Israel went through the wilderness too. We covered this in, earlier. Israel, that's something that I had not uh, realized. The Lord just dropped it on me as I'm reading this. Uh, verse in Luke, the Lord says Israel went through this wilderness too. Il Il Israel uh, went through the wilderness experience. They 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 also um, were hungry, and the Lord fed them with the manna. Praise God! So, um, forty days tempted of the devil, Jesus eats nothing, no thing, and then after the forty days end, Luke says he was hungry. Now. I want to stress this because this is this is this is for those of you who are going through your wilderness experience. You know, Jesus, he was full of the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost who filled him. And that's where the Lord wants us to focus. 
Is the Holy Spirit filling you? Are you being filled by the things of the world? Are you being filled by, um, by the creature comforts, the food? Are you still being filled by money? Are you being filled by drink and clothing? And are you, are you being filled by the things, the external things that cannot fill your spirit? Because if you are, you are just getting by. You are not living. This is why Jesus stressed it very clear to the tempter. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Isn't that interesting? Out of the mouth of God. So we're talking about food here, right? The devil's trying to get Jesus to eat, to, to command these stones to be, be, made, uh, uh, be made bread. And Jesus throws him with something so that just had not been revealed to me until just now, where when Jesus is speaking of the word, the word is coming out of the mouth of God. How interesting that while we're talking about food, what we are supposed to be living by is not food that enters our mouth, but the food that comes, the sustenance that comes out of the mouth of God. Glory to God. That Oh, praise God. So our Lord, is he's, he's saying here, he is, he is the man who shall not live by bread alone. He establishes this law. He fulfills it so that we too, not just him, we too may live by it and walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because this is, this is the power that the Father would endure us with, right? So what happens when we fast? Let's talk about fasting because this is a word about fasting. We grow weaker in our flesh. We, our flesh begins to feel weaker and weaker and the belly starts to crave food and any kind of food in that matter, even if you don't like certain kind of food, the mind begins to think of food. You begin to have these delusions of food. You begin to dream food. Certainly it's been my experience and you begin to think on drink as well. I'll never forget the night that I was fantasizing about a Starbucks mocha frappuccino. <laughs> So food and drink is something that we have been doing. Why? All our lives. We've been doing food and drink all our lives. We've been doing this comfort all our lives and very well. Hey, if some of us have a little more meat on our, on our bones than others, we've been doing this really well. And I can speak from experience. So we know how to eat. We know how to survive by eating food, by eating bread. Heck, we'll just stuff ourselves, right? We'll stuff ourselves with anything. Like when you are you get home from work and you're so exhausted and you don't want to cook or, you hey, you, go, you don't even have time to go to the grocery store. What do you do? You stuff your mouth with anything that's around. So we are so good at this. We know how to eat and how to eat well. We know how to live. We know how to survive. I wouldn't even call that living anymore. We know how to survive by bread alone. But the question the Holy Spirit is asking, do we know how to live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God? Do we know how to do this? Glory be to God. So we survive through bread. We live by God's every word. All right? This is how it works. We are surviving. So if you have just been eating food, listen, I'm, you know, for as many years as you've been on earth, if you've been just eating food, but you haven't been living by the, by the word of God, at every word at that, Jesus is very specific, every word of God, you have been getting by only. And what God wants us to do is to eat and be filled and not be uh, hungry anymore. So Jesus declares this in John 6, 32 to 35. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus declares he is the bread of life. The bread of God, which comes from heaven and gives life unto the world. The bread that is not like the manna, he says. This is in further scripture. Where the father, fathers ate and still died. But bread of whom, and this is me paraphrasing, bread of whom he that eats shall live forever. Glory be to God. Jesus is the true meat, the true bread, the true food, the true sustenance. All the mystery has been solved. So he is the man. Uh, the, the, the firstborn of every creature. And so he is the firstborn of the dead. He is the man, the firstborn who shall not live by bread alone. Glory be to God. He fulfills the commandment. He fulfills the law so that we too have the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. To live by bread that is Jesus Christ. He being the true bread. So beloved, it is not just food. It is not just physical 
food. I know it tastes delicious. The one thing I was meditating on today, as you know, the Lord says to me, the Lord says to me, food is not a fulfillment. Food is just a temporary relief. It is not fulfillment. Listen, it can fill your belly, but it you know how it is. We eat and we eat, and as much as we love eating, as much as we enjoy the, 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 the meal, we get full after a while. And, and truly, we get full um, not too long after we start eating, especially if we are chewing correctly and we are allowing um, every digestive, uh, every digestive t- uh, step to take to take place um, you know we're not just scarfing the food we start to feel satiated we start to feel full and no matter how delicious the food is and no matter how how wonderfully hot and delicious and tender it is we cannot we cannot keep eating it so that's why we put it in leftovers but the Lord is saying this is just a temporary relief it is a temporary relief for your flesh my word, my son, my bread, my manna sent from heaven is not just a temporary relief to meet needs, to uh, 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 means to um, an end. It is life. Glory be to God. It is life indeed. And so, beloved, are we living by bread, uh, physical bread alone, or are we also living by every word of God. And how do we live by every word of God? Well, Jesus is the bread. Jesus is the life. Jesus Jesus is, is, is our sustenance, is our portion. And so one thing the Lord is dealing with me on these days is, are you... Are you just uh, getting by? Are you just uh, depending on these comforts? Are you depending on your food? Are you depending on your money? Are you, are you depending on your drink? If you go into the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, it says that uh, one of man's greatest gifts, one of God's greatest gifts to man is that man shall enjoy the fruit of his labor. He shall rejoice in his labor, but he shall also rejoice in food and drink below it. There comes a point where not even that suffices. Not even that fills us. If we are not living by God's bread, by God's every word, beloved. So we have to ensure that every day, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, what we're doing, that we're focusing on Christ, that we're focusing on living by that every word. And it could be through reading the word of God. It, isn't, it is through focusing on the word of God through meditation. That's another thing the Lord's been dealing with me on is when you meditate on my word, you are digesting my word. You're living my word. You are eating my word to digest my word. It's not just to scarf the word. This is why sometimes it's just, it doesn't help when you, you know, you, you want to read an entire chapter. What, what about the chapter do you remember? What about um, the four chapters that you read do you remember? It is preferable that you focus on reading and taking the time to digest, to meditate, to allow the Holy Spirit to break down, to, dig- to help you digest the Word. And this, this is how we begin to really take in more of God and not just of, 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 of physical comforts because physical comforts can only take us so far but that is very clear that the word of God is what really gives us it, it gives us life it gives us meaning it gives us purpose it is not just what we are relying on in the external world beloved and I speak as somebody who the Lord is teaching this to and so beloved I want to leave you with this word I praise God for each and every one of you who um, stop by, who listen to these videos, who watch these uh, these videos on my channel. I praise God for um, all of the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining this channel. Um, I pray this word finds you in excellent health, beloved. Let's start. Um, let's really start living by the word of God. Let's start applying this. Jesus did it, and He endured, and He put the devil in his place so that we have the power to do the same thing as well. And that's another thing, before I leave you, there's another, another thing here that the Lord revealed to me. As I was writing away in my journal, I'm going to share some of my, my own journal entries here. Um, 
And when we're in fasting, our bodies grow, grow weaker, right? Our bodies grow weaker. We start to hunger. And listen, you don't really start starving until the 41st day. So um, hunger, but you do feel that those pangs, the, the desire to taste and to eat the delicious food, the drink, the coffee, drink, the, you know, fill your belly. It's all about it, your belly saying, fill me, fill me, you know, feed me. <laughs> so fill your belly. But, you know, life, your life is not solely dependent on food. We already talked about that. Food is the temporary relief. Thank you, Lord. One eats it, and then the belly is full and then satiated. And then one doesn't want the food anymore. But then later on, one wants the food again. One is starving again. One is hungry again. One is, the belly is, you know, craving the food again. And so it's really no end to this cycle, is there? So it feels, the body, the, the food fuels the body, but it does not feel, it does not fuel the spirit. Oh, there it is. It does not fill the spirit. What fills the spirit? The Holy Ghost. Oh, glory be to God. The Holy Ghost fills the spirit, beloved. The Holy Ghost fills the spirit. And so in fasting, we are allowing our flesh, our carnal desires to die. We are subjecting, submitting, subduing our carnal flesh, our desires to the Lord. Glory be to God. So, Though it tastes great, it is not the source of life. I don't care how delicious the New York cheesecake is or not. I love New York cheesecake. I don't care how delicious the pizza is, how delicious even the vegetables are, you know, when you cook them and you put some butter on them. Ooh, don't get me started. It tastes great. It tastes delicious. But it is not where life is, truly. You, you know, <laughs> It's interesting because our whole lives we've been told to eat something, eat something. You're going you're gonna to pass out. You're going to die if you don't eat. You're, you're not going to die. You're not going to die if you don't eat. You'll die without Jesus. And you'll, you know, you'll truly die without Jesus. You won't just die, die without Jesus. So Jesus Christ establishes that man shall not, as a commandment, he shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So let's establish this again because if you get nothing from tonight, get this. I pray you get this. So food enters through our mouth, all right? Yet Jesus is saying man lives by what comes out of God's mouth. Glory be to God. Isn't that amazing? It is essential. This is the essence of life, God's every word. That's what man lives by. He does not survive by God's every word. He lives by God's every word. So if man for if man does not live by God's every word that comes out of the mouth of God, then man is only getting by. I have to stress this, continue to stress this. Man is only getting by. Jesus is saying it's not just bread. You know, the devil here is saying, you know, if you're the son of God, tempting the power of, of the Lord and Jesus, if you are the son of God, command, use your powers, command these stones to be made bread. But Jesus is saying it is not just bread. Don't become complacent. Do not conform to the image of this world. Do not become complacent in this and live just by bread. Live, 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 live. By every word that comes out of the mouth of God, live truly, live essentially. Don't just settle for your bread, for physical food, for bread. Because, yes, living without food is hard. It is torture. Your mind's going to think of food. This is for those of you who will enter into your seasons of fasting. Glory be to God. Uh, your mind will think of food and will long for it. But food is not the answer to your prayers. God's word, his commandments, his peace, his joy, his, his love, his wisdom, his grace, his direction, his guidance, they are the answers to your prayers, beloved. It is not even money. It is not even your clothes. It is not even your drink. It is certainly not your food. That is not the answer to your prayers. Listen, there are people who are, they are festering in money. They are festering in delicious, they eat banquets, amazing banquets all, all day, every day. Royalty does this. They, 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 they're they festering in expensive clothes and the best kind of clothes there is, the brands. But do, do, do are they really living? Is the question. No, because even in their riches, they're getting by if they are not living by God's every word. Isn't that interesting? This is kingdom. This is, this, is, this is real kingdom sustenance here. So food is just filling the belly until it quiets the belly. And, it doesn't, and the belly does, isn't cry out for fulfillment. So when your belly's crying out for food, it's crying out for fulfillment. It's crying out to be fed. But food is just to strengthen the body. I want to stress this again. What about your spirit? Are you strengthening your spirit with the word of God? Are you strengthening your spirit with Jesus Christ? Are you strengthening your spirit with the Holy Spirit? He's the one who fills you. He's the one who's supposed to fill you, not food. So what about doing the will of God? God's will is that 
You do not live by bread alone, beloved, but by every word of his mouth, you shall live, beloved. The Holy Spirit, you know, let's just ask the Holy Spirit right now to strengthen us, to strengthen us as we go through this journey. Whatever you are, if you are entering a storm, if you are in the middle of a storm, if you are coming out of a storm, just give glory to God. Ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen your spirit. Because in strengthening your spirit, your body, your flesh will be subdued to the will of God. And you will be stronger. Don't you see? This is how Jesus defeated Satan, beloved. So we are supposed to live by every word of the Father's beloved. And that's where we're going to leave it off tonight in our conference call. I, I love you all so very much, beloved. I am so, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's been, a, you know, I had some... Um, some things going on today that uh, I just I I really needed to get into this conference call and deliver this word because as what the Lord is teaching me I want to teach it to you beloved so that you are also um, we are on this journey together we are all in different steps of our journey but we are all in the journey together towards the kingdom um, just racing towards the kingdom racing towards towards the Lord racing towards righteousness beloved no longer um, uh, slaves to our flesh but slaves to Christ, beloved, thank you so much for joining me. I am Grace, your spiritual godmother, your life coach, beloved. Thank you for subscribing again. I really, really appreciate all of your support, beloved. Let's keep depending on the Lord and not on the creature comforts, on the things that the world depends on, beloved. So until we speak again, this is our uh, this was our English conference call, and uh, next week we'll follow our Spanish conference call. Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has to share um, for all of us. Let's eat the let's eat the meat of our Father and no longer the meat of the world, beloved. So um, God bless you all, beloved. I love you all so very much. Take care. Bye bye.